Hey, what is up, Raptors? Welcome back to another episode of the Hash Raptor YouTube channel. Hope everyone's doing great out there. Hey, today I'm gonna to be upgrading the memory in my primary production machine that I use here. I use this for testing, mining, hash rates, editing. Um, I do some CPU mining here on this AMD Ryzen 5 2600, and I get pretty good results with them. You may have seen that in a previous video. But today I'm gonna to be upgrading the RAM. I'm going from 16 gigabytes of memory to 32. And I am going to a little bit faster memory as well. This is DDR4 3200 megahertz memory. And it's specifically built for the AMD processor. From what I understand, that doesn't matter as much these days. But we're gonna make this upgrade and I, we're gonna to try to do some testing on Monero's Random X and without doing any overclocking. So here I haven't overclocked the memory and that's because on this B450 motherboard, there's not a lot of overclocking options. I can overclock it, but it's not quite as robust as some other boards. So my plan is gonna to be to take this memory. There's two uh, eight gig memory sticks in here and I'm gonna repurpose those. I think I'm gonna take those and put them in maybe two new miners I'm gonna bring up or upgrade the memory in an existing miner. And then we're gonna drop this in. Yeah, so I'm pretty excited about this. I've heard uh, really good things about this Corsair memory. Got really good reviews. We're gonna give it a shot. And I'm also gonna try a before and after on, again, Random X. And we're gonna see if it makes any difference at all. All right, guys, that's it. Let's jump right in. Here we go. It's a 32 gig kit. So we've got four eight gig memory sticks. I'll leave a link to this memory in the show notes below if you wanna take a look at it. I like that, it feels really solid. <laughs> but hopefully it performs well because that's what matters, right? All right, let's get this in there. Okay guys, I just wanted to show you our control real quick. We have our two eight gig sticks in here still, and we are gonna upgrade that. But before we do, we're gonna do a quick control test here. And you can see in Verizon Master, we are at about 3.5 gigahertz on the CPU. That's 1.1375 volts. And we're gonna do a quick test, to see what kind of hash rate that gets us. And then we'll replace this memory, we'll upgrade it, and run another test and see what happens. Okay, here we go. All right guys, so it's been mining away for a couple minutes now. And just so you can see what we're running, we're using XM Rig 5.5.1. And there you can see I am on my Ryzen 5 2600. It's a six core processor. And we do have huge pages enabled. You can see the number of threads here. We have 12 threads available and eight threads are being used. And then down here, we've got some hash rates, which are very similar to what I've seen over the past couple days. After running for a few minutes here, you can see, looks like we're at about 4,390 and our high is about 4,461 hash per second, which is pretty good on this processor. So let's pop this memory out and let's see if this memory upgrade makes a difference. Okay, Raptors, so this is what we're upgrading from. This is our Ballistics 8 gig memory stick and you can see right here, we're at 2666 megahertz and we had two of them. So we were at 16, yanking those, probably gonna use those individually on some other mining rigs. This is kind of that baseline memory that I've used in the past and Here's what we're upgrading to. And without any overclocking, this is 3200 megahertz memory, so we can overclock that, but I'm just gonna do some out of the box testing and see what kind of difference we see, if it makes any difference at all. By the way, going from 16 gigs to 32 gigs, that shouldn't make any difference when mining random X, I don't think, we'll see. But uh, my expectation is, is that the speed increase going from 2600 megahertz to 3200 may have a difference. I don't know. I could be wrong. Honestly, 
Um, here's my expectation. We're going to see a minor bump up, but I have no idea what to expect, guys. So we're going to throw this in and see if the faster memory makes any difference. The amount of memory shouldn't matter at all, but the faster memory that can potentially matter. But let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. And boom, <laughs> there you go. All right, we got the memory installed. Let's fire this rig up and see what happens here. Now, another thing worth pointing out, and you may have noticed this, is I'm using the stock cooler on here. So if you get a better cooler, you know, you can you can do a bit more with your overclocks. And the same for memory, you know, you can try cooling this down as well. But with what I got out of the box, my best results were light overclocks. And, and just for the purpose of not trying to impress anyone with a really high temporary hash rate, but you know, keeping a, uh, a nice stable, a nice stable rig. All right, so check this out. We just rebooted, made sure we didn't have any applications running in the background at startup here. So we got a good number right out of the gate and check this out. We are at 4807 right here at our max and 4772 is the current hash rate. So I'm gonna let this run for a little while. We'll see what kind of average we get, but yeah, I mean, I haven't done any overclocking. Um, and it's not a huge difference, but it is a little bit. So looks like this memory may, uh, there may be something to it. All right, we'll be back shortly. Okay, guys, so for fun, I went in and I tried to bump up uh, the overclock on the memory. And I ran a couple tests and I really didn't get much out of it. So it looked like just, you know, the out of the box I think we were running at 3200 megahertz on this motherboard. Um, gave us a little bump up there, so no overclocking really helped a lot. But again, just for fun, I, uh, I did a little overclock on the processor and I was trying to see if we could hit five mega hash here. And uh, we are at about 4.9 mega hash. And I bumped this Ryzen 5 2600 up from 3.4 gigahertz up to 3.8 and increase the voltage. And I'm gonna play around with it a little bit more. The only downside to doing this is, you know, you lose some possible stability, but I'm gonna see if we can touch five just for fun before we go here. All right, I'll be back. Okay guys, I wanted to finish this video up with a fun little overclock. We were able to touch just over five mega hash. So we're at, it looks like 5187 hash on uh, this Ryzen 5 2600, the non-X edition. Overclocking the memory didn't help a whole lot. Again, just use the out of the box settings on this new memory, but um, to get over five, I overclocked the processor again to four gigahertz up from 3.4 and uh, got a nice little performance bump. So I'll tell you what, just uh, one more time, I'm gonna let this run for about 15 minutes, make sure it's stable, and, uh, and we'll call it a wrap. All right, so check this out, guys. I kept locking up um, when I was at that 4.1 gigahertz, I tried dropping it to four, I was playing around with my voltage, and at this point, this is just, it's one of those things where I can just keep doing this all night long, so I'm trying to find a decent stable overclock. And right now I'm back at 3.8 gigahertz. I'm firing this thing back up and uh, we're still at five mega hash. So 5,002 looks like our peak number here. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I'm gonna let this run for about 15 minutes and see if it'll stay stable. Uh, and we will be back shortly. Let's see if this is uh, what we can finish this video with guys. All right, here we go. Okay, Raptors, check this out. We have been stable for over 15 minutes here. So, and we are touching, we are right at that five mega hash on random X here. So I'm really happy with this. We finally got a stable overclock. So probably more often than not, you know, if you're not worried about five or 10% difference, it's better just to run with your out of the box settings. But, um, yeah, but for us, I think the final conclusion here is that upgrading our memory, we did see that that gave us about a 5% performance increase, guys, on Random X, which is pretty cool. Again, I'm going to be using this for other purposes as well, but I just wanted to see what that uh, 
performance difference would really be. And again, the memory overclocking didn't, didn't really yield any difference for me. Let me know if you all had any different results than that. I know everyone's mileage may vary, but um, so we got about 5% out of the memory upgrade and then about another 5% out of overclocking this to 3.8 gigahertz is where we landed. And I figured out one of the stability issues I had was I found a limitation on this B450 Aorus Pro motherboard that I have. It really isn't stable above 1.36 volts. So even though Ryzen Master will let me go up to 1.4, 1.425, this board just really isn't, uh, isn't stable above 1.368. So I just kept backing it down from there until I found uh, what appears to be a stable overclock. Now let me say one more thing. There are various stress tests you can run with Ryzen Master and other software applications, Cinebench. Apparently none of the stress tests are quite as strenuous as, as RandomX. So if you want to run something to really put your processor to the test to see if it's stable, there you go. It's a uh, XM rig and random X. All right, I won't go on anymore, guys. This has been pretty fun. The findings were kind of neat, and we will see you in the next episode. If you haven't hit that like button, that subscribe button, please do it. Okay, guys, take care. Bye-bye.